In this lesson, we want to talk about finding the absolute value of a complex number. So at this point in our course, we should fully understand the concept of taking the absolute value of some real number, okay? We should know that the absolute value of a number is just a measure of the distance from zero to that number that we're taking the absolute value of on our number line, okay? So we know that if we take the absolute value of zero, it's just zero. If we take the absolute value of some positive number, it's just the number itself. If we take the absolute value of a negative number, we just take the opposite of the number, you could say make it positive. And so we can see that very clearly with these two examples, right? So something like the absolute value of positive five is just equal to five, right? If I look at my kind of sample number line here, I have zero highlighted and five highlighted. So basically five is five units away from zero on the number line. This is true whenever you take the absolute value of any positive number. It could be a million, it could be a trillion, whatever it is, it's always gonna be that number of units away from zero on the number line. Okay, when we think about the absolute value of a negative number, something like the absolute value of negative five, we said that we just take the opposite of the number, or again, we just make it positive, okay? So in this case, you see negative five is highlighted, zero is highlighted, so negative five is also five units away from zero on the number line. Again, this is true for any negative number that you work with. So the absolute value of negative one million would be one million, right? The absolute value of any negative number is just going to be the opposite of that number, units away from zero on the number line. So again, that's how we find our answer. We just take the opposite or again, make it positive. So now when we talk about taking the absolute value of a complex number, the concept is the same, okay? The absolute value of a complex number is also a measure of its distance from zero. The only difference is now we're gonna be measuring the distance on the complex plane, okay? So this is something we talked about in the last lesson. We talked about how to plot a complex number on the complex plane. So hopefully you saw that lesson. In case you didn't, I can just kind of walk you through this really quickly. Basically with the complex plane, it looks the same as the kind of coordinate plane that you've worked with throughout all of algebra, right? Instead of having a Y axis, the vertical axis that you're used to, now this guy is labeled as the imaginary axis, okay? then instead of having the kind of horizontal axis or the x-axis that you're used to, the horizontal axis is now labeled as the real axis, okay? So you've just gotta know that the horizontal axis is the real axis and the vertical axis is the imaginary axis. So once you understand those two things, once you commit that to memory, you should recall that a complex number flows in the format of A plus BI when it's in standard form, okay? So this number here, this A, is the real part. In this case, this is three, okay? This number B, the number that's multiplying I, the imaginary unit, that's the imaginary part. So that, in this case, is gonna be four, okay? That's what's multiplying I. Let me make that a little bit better. So to plot three plus four I on the complex plane, it's just like plotting three comma four on the coordinate plane we're used to working with. I basically wanna think about a real location of three, so that's here. And I wanna think about an imaginary location of four. So go up four units, that's here. What's the meeting point between those two? So three units to the right on the real axis and four units up on the imaginary axis. So this is three plus four i, okay? So that's the point three plus four i. Now, when we think about getting the absolute value of three plus four i, so the absolute value of three plus four i, what is this? Well, it's the distance from this three plus four i, this point here, to this origin here, which has a real location of zero and an imaginary location of zero. So you can say really it's zero plus zero i for the origin. So we already know how to find the distance between two points on a coordinate plane. We know that we can use our Pythagorean formula to do this. And we know we've already derived a distance formula, right, to find this but I wanna go through this process again, and we're gonna derive a formula for finding the absolute value of any complex number. Let me just kind of draw a line connecting these. And again, we're just thinking about the measure of this line here, the line that's gonna connect those two points, okay? So we could find this by again, dropping a point here where we're at three on the real axis, or we could also drop a point at four on the imaginary axis. Either one of those could be used to complete our right triangle. So we went ahead and just drew the right triangle already. It's just a little bit cleaner when it's pre-drawn. So you'll notice that we dropped a point in here at three on the real axis. Again, you could have also dropped a point in at four on the imaginary axis. You could have completed a right triangle in that manner as well. So once we have this drawn, we can kind of think about the concept using the Pythagorean formula. 
So we remember this is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the lengths of the two kind of shorter sides, we call them legs. And then the c is the hypotenuse, the longest side, okay? So this is the hypotenuse, and that's what we wanna figure out. This is c, and again, this is going to represent what? The distance from three plus four i to zero plus zero i, or the origin. So it's the absolute value of three plus four i. That's what we wanna find. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say this is the absolute value of three plus four i, and I'm gonna square that. So what we need to figure out is a and b. So we know that we could label this as a and this as b, okay? So a is just the measure from here to here. Now, we can do this inside of absolute value bars, but again, because we're squaring the result, it's really not necessary. You're really thinking about what? It's the difference between the imaginary values. So at the top, you're at four, right? This is a four here. And at the bottom, you're at zero. So four minus zero is going to be four. Or again, you could do zero minus four, which is negative four. Either way, when you square it, you're gonna get 16, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and say this is four squared. Then plus, you wanna also think about B, which is gonna be this horizontal measure here. So the difference between three and zero, right? You have a real location here of three and a real location here of zero. So you could do three minus zero, which is three, or you could do zero minus three, which is negative three. Again, you don't need absolute value because you're gonna be squaring it. Three squared is nine, negative three squared is nine is the same either way, right? So I'm just gonna put three squared here, okay? So we find that the absolute value of three plus four i, which is what we're trying to find, squared is equal to four squared plus three squared, okay? So what I wanna do is just take the square root of each side. So take the square root of that side, that's gonna cancel this and take square root of this side. And so four squared is 16, three squared is nine, 16 plus nine is 25. You have the principal square root of 25 is equal to the absolute value of three plus four i. And then we end up with five is equal to the absolute value of three plus four i, okay? So very, very easy to go through and figure that out, but it was kind of a lengthy process. So we don't wanna to have to, again, pull out a complex plane each time and go through this to figure out the absolute value of a complex number. You gotta be thinking like there must be an easier way. And in fact, there is. So just like we derived a distance formula, okay? When we worked with finding the distance between two points on a coordinate plane, we can do the same thing for finding the absolute value of any complex number. So let me erase everything. And first I just wanna rewrite kind of the distance formula that we know. So D, the distance between two points is equal to the square root of, you have the difference in X value. So X sub two minus X sub one squared. Then plus you have the difference in Y values. So Y sub two minus Y sub one squared, okay? So this is the distance formula that we know. So D in this case would just take the place of the absolute value of some complex number, okay? So this would be a plus bi, okay? In this case, it was just three plus four i, but it could be any complex number that you're trying to find the absolute value of. So this is equal to what? The square root of, so when we think about the difference in x values, well, now we don't have x values, we have real values, okay? So because I'm always working with this guy as a point, zero plus zero i, one of these guys is going to be zero, okay? It's easier to kind of see what's going on if I just put this as zero. So if you have x sub two minus zero, or in this case, you could say your real value that you're given, which is one of them's gonna be a, and one of them's going to be zero. So really I could just say it's a minus zero squared, okay? You can easily see that in this case, I could put three and say three minus zero squared, or again, I could reverse that and say zero minus three squared. Either way, I'm gonna get the same result because I'm squaring it. So in either case, this is gonna simplify to just a squared. Okay, so a squared. So this value here gets squared. Then plus, for y sub two minus y sub one, again, I don't have y values anymore, I have imaginary values. So now I'm thinking about, okay, well, the difference here, because I have zero as a location of one of the imaginary values, well, I can erase this and just put zero. Okay, I could just put zero. So again, if I think about that, my y sub two, one of those guys, when I think about this in terms of the imaginary values, it's just gonna be b, right? I would have, b is one of them, then minus zero as the other, and this is squared. This again simplifies to just b squared. So it's very easy to find the absolute value of a complex number. The absolute value of a plus bi is just gonna be the square root of a squared plus b squared. And we found that already. We found that the absolute value of three plus four i was just the square root of three squared plus four squared. Okay, let me make that better. 
Okay, so three squared is again nine, four squared is 16. It was the absolute value of 25, which is 16 plus nine, which is five, okay? Very, very easy once you get this formula, but I just wanted you to see where it came from. A lot of times, you know, you're working through things, you just get the formula and you don't understand where it came from. So it's kind of worth it to spend the, you know, 10 or 15 minutes to understand where this comes from. That way, if you get in a pinch and you're asked to kind of, you know, explain where it comes from, you're able to do it. Okay, so I have a cleaner version where I've represented this. Again, the absolute value of a plus bi is just equal to the square root of a squared, so the real part squared, plus b squared, okay, the imaginary part squared. All right, let's just go through a few examples real quick. Very easy concept overall. So again, let me just write the formula here. The absolute value of a plus bi is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, okay? So this guy right here would be equal to what? This is my a, this is my b. So it's the square root of a is negative five, negative five squared is 25, plus seven is my b, seven squared is 49. So what's 25 plus 49? Well, that's gonna be 74. So this is equal to the square root of 74. Now 74 is divisible by two, but it's 37 times two and 37 is a prime number. So we can't really simplify this any further. So we just write the square root of 74. All right, let's take a look at another one. Again, let me write the formula. The absolute value of a plus bi is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay, so in this case, I have the absolute value of negative 16 plus 10i. So this is equal to the square root of a is negative 16. So if I square that, I would get positive 256, then plus b here is 10, 10 squared is 100. So this would be the square root of 356. So 356 is four times 89. So four times 89. So we know four is a perfect square. So I could say this is two times the square root of 89, right? Two times square root of 89. And 89 is gonna be a prime number, so we can't do anything more with that. All right, so what about the absolute value of negative three minus 29i? So again, let me write my formula. It's the absolute value of a plus bi is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So again, this is equal to a here is negative three, negative three squared is nine. So the square root of nine, then plus b here is negative 29. You could write this as plus negative. So negative 29 squared is 841. So if I sum those two, I'm gonna get 850, right under the square root sign. So 850 is 25 times 34. It's 25 times 34. We know 25 is a perfect square. Square root of 25 is five. So I can say this is five, five times square root of 34. And we know 34 is just 17 times two. So you can't really do anything else with that. All right, for the last one, I gave you one that students kind of struggle with. What if I asked you for the absolute value of nine i? Well, it just so happens that you can still use the formula if you got the absolute value of 9i, again, the absolute value of a plus bi is equal to the square root of, again, a squared plus b squared. So in this case, a is just zero, right? You can say the absolute value of zero plus 9i, this is the square root of, zero squared is just zero, so forget about it. You would just take your b, which is nine, and square that, so that's 81. Square root of 81 is just nine, okay? Why does that make sense? Well, if you think about this graphically, if I look at 9i on my complex plane, that's right here, okay? So how far away is it from here to here? Well, it's just nine units, right? If I made a line here kind of connecting these two points, you would say that's nine units, right? If I rotated that and you saw it as kind of a horizontal number line, right? If I was measuring from here to here, you could easily see that that distance is nine units. It's the same thing if we're going vertical. Right? So that should make sense to you that the absolute value of 9i is going to be positive 9.